Welcome back to Tech Tuesday here on Northwest Digital News. Harry Brailsford there on your left, Kevin Hunter here at the broadcast desk with Kyle Torgerson making the tech happen here on a tech show. How about that, tech on tech? Hmm. Yeah. That's a, that could be a new show. That could be a new show, Tech on Tech, yes. Better write that down. Well, we're going to talk about uh, mergers and acquisitions in the area of tech. Speaking of that, the SMB space. And uh, a little conversation on the good guys versus the bad guys. So, uh, Harry, where would you like to start? Well, let me, let me give you some industry updates. So, first of all, when you talk Tech on Tech, I'm wearing my Cal Poly shirt, mm -hmm. which is a uh, well-known technical uh uh, educational institution, one sun out, one sun in. So I thought I'd change up my look. So shout out to Cal Poly. Uh, um, <laughs> but on, on the on the business space, it's been quite a week in my world. So just to level set, I come from the technology community of managed services providers, MSPs. So that's the the computer guy, the reseller, the break fix. Uh, we all we all know that computer person, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I've grown up with it, as have a lot of my readers and listeners. And so what was very interesting is, by all accounts, the first billion dollar acquisition just occurred a couple of days ago. So I'm going to do uh, uh, kind of the fastest two minutes in tech, and then, and then we'll get to the context. You and I will have a chat. So sure. here are the facts. Um, there's an entrepreneur named Arnie Bellini. Uh, who we, we go back to the beginning, and I don't want to date myself, but it, uh, suffice it to say the, the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and he uh, started out like we all do. He started out uh, himself and his brother, and they had a software solution, basically an ERP uh, uh, supply chain management program. It's called Professional Services Automation in my industry, PSA. Mm -hmm. And and Kevin, it was on the Access database, Microsoft Access database, and it ran on C drive. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward the movie, and they became a very successful company, and they of course went to cloud. And uh, again, a PSA. If I said words like CRM and ERP, it's it's basically that infrastructure to run your business, mm -hmm. and and in this case, computer consulting. So here are the facts. Arnie is the founder of ConnectWise. What I like about Arnie is um, he never took any uh, investment capital. So, you know, his capitalization table is in really good shape. Doesn't, you know, not beholden to lenders and investors in, until just the other day. So Tama Bravo, Tama Bravo, a large private equity firm acquired ConnectWise for $1.5 Here's what that means. It's 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 quite a company now. Um, Seventy of the employees are instant millionaires, mm -hmm. and and if you're showing uh, an article from uh, my colleague Joe Panateri that, that does a fine job of laying it out, a um, hundred people are going to be laid off, but but that's okay. You know that that that's natural in an acquisition. Uh, they go on to say that there's going to be some new hires. Um, that's not uncommon that there's redundancy. I mean, you know, Kevin, do you really need two accounting departments? Probably not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and I believe they're going to be taken care of. But next point, amongst the employees, north of a thousand employees, amongst the employees of that 1.5 billion is 270 million is being distributed to employee shareholders. So again, I got to give it to Arnie for his generosity. You don't always see that. That that harkens back to Microsoft. You know how mm -hmm. Microsoft made a lot of millionaires. Right. Not not all companies do that. Okay. Not mm -hmm. everybody does that. And then uh two final points on that and then a little more history. Um my question is if you take one point five billion, you subtract two seventy, uh and I know Arnie's I believe he's still a partner with his brother does that make Arnie the first billionaire coming out of the SMB space and technology in in, in the MSP community? I, I don't know the answer. It's more rhetorical. But have, have we just seen the first unicorn, the first billionaire come out of our space? That would sure signal a lot, a lot of industry maturity. Finally, on Arnie, for now, uh, he is out. 
Arnie is out with the acquisition. Uh, the articles that are out this morning say that he put in place a transition team over the last six months, and I guess Arnie is I, he's in Tampa, Florida. I'm assuming he's out on a boat as, as we speak, enjoying the mm-hmm. sun. <laughs> Not a bad place um, to be. No, no. And, and you know, at the end of the day, I got to hand it to him. You know, I mean, a, a person that built a company from the, the apartment or the garage and got acquired for 1.5 bill 20 years later, uh, I can respect that. Um, now, let me give us some context. Mm-hmm. 15 months ago, there was another major merger in our space. Um, and the company's called Autotask, and Autotask competed in the PSA market with uh, with with ConnectWise. Mm-hmm. So Autotask, it was kind of um, a dual. I, I I don't even know how to describe this. Vista Vista Equity Partners, a private equity firm, paid ninety nine million for Autotask. So first of all, that's not one point five billion. Let's let's mm-hmm. de- denote that one point five billion versus 99 million so noted mm-hmm. number two they had what i would call a simultaneous merger so vista equity acquired autotask and simultaneously acquired a backup company called datto and datto was run by this young whiz kid kind of like kyle over to your side um this 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 kid started a backup company literally in his basement and it grew and grew and grew, and his success is well deserved. Uh, one year later, uh, Austin McCord, the uh, the kid, mm-hmm. Austin McCord was out. is is often the case after a transition period. Um, I don't know what he's he's too young to retire. I don't know what he's doing. And then uh, <laughs> I I would offer with the Datto and Autotask merger, you you have seen some cultural differences and. Kevin, let's weave that into the good guy, bad guy talk a little while that sometimes these mergers are, you know, you're bringing together two different, two different cultures. Um, Definitely. Fast, fast forward the movie. And, and again, I, I, I got to admit ConnectWise won the war against Autotask. And it was really interesting. You had Arnie Bellini, who's the founder CEO of ConnectWise. And you had Bob Goggert, who was the founder CEO at the time of Autotask, and they were uh, gentlemen. They were they were fierce competitors. Let mm-hmm. me tell you, they 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 slugged it out. But you know, after five p.m., I mean, far be it from me to if the walls could talk. Oh, let's let the walls talk. In in two thousand seven at the SMB Nation Fall Conference, the two of them were laughing and crying and playing a high stakes poker game up in the uh, the suite at the Mar- Mar- Marriott Redmond. Mm-hmm. We held our conference in Redmond and uh, boy, what what I would give for a photo of that. Um, so it, uh, and, and, and one final story before we get to the meet of today, uh, just painting a visualization. These are real people. And in 2004, my company, SMB Nation, we had our fall conference we brought everybody over to Bainbridge Island on five buses for a Caribbean barbecue. And, and I'll never forget Arnie Bellini wore a suit at a Caribbean party, number one. Number mm-hmm. two, he went flying off the rope swing into a big bushel of raz- or blackberry bushes. And as you know, blackberry bushes are not friendly, uh, kind of a, a, a past. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, Kevin, I want to pose, now that I've given... An industry update, huge acquisition, ConnectWise by Tom Tom uh, Bravo for 1.5 bill. It relates to their competition with Autotask back in the day. To me, it raises a business issue, mm-hmm. and and I'm coming at it from the technology space. But I want to ask you a rhetorical question about. Sure. Uh, do back do, do do bad guys finish first and do nice finish last? Because it's a little bit rough out there in the wild wild west. So. I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> you know what? There, it, it it seems that way, doesn't it? That uh, sometimes the bad guys are finishing first. Um, however, there there are so many examples, and and maybe because in part it's been a little bit of my professional focus, but there are so many examples of really really good guys finishing first. And here's a here's a thing that I'd say about that as well is. Part of what happens under the 
so-called good guy leadership is that there is also a number of first place finishers within their organization too. Yeah. And so yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of that sort of thing. But I, I just want to share like, um, there's actually five different things that I think about in an organization that is different between these so-called good guy organizations and the, the bad guy organizations. Okay. And these can happen at a small level and they happen at, at, at the larger level in an organization. But So one of the first things that I, I, I want to talk about, and I'm actually just going to throw five things out on the table, and then I'll give you Let's some of the differences that I, that I see here. There's culture. Um, there's vision yeah. in an organization. Uh, you think about the team. There's morale. And there's weathering the storm. And as we all know in business, you know, you have your ups, ups and down cycles. Um, so weathering the storm is really, you know, what happens when the company is down and how they get things turned around and moving the other direction. So let me start with culture because one of the things that I have noticed in all the good guys that I talk to in business is they'll tell you that their number one responsibility in their company is company culture, mm -hmm. number one. Yep. And so here's a here's an interesting thing between these so-called bad guys in business and these good guys in business. One of the things that I notice as it pertains to company culture in the bad guy organization is they really want the team to be on the same page. They'll say that a lot. You hear you hear that we all need to get on the same page. And what they mean is they want the personality or they want the culture to be really reflection of their own personality. That's what they're looking for. But in in the good guy company, when they talk about culture, what they're really talking about is how they preserve the personalities of the individuals within that culture. So it's a very different thing. Um, it's, it's a focus on the, the individual personalities. The other, the bad guy says, I want this company to be a reflection of my personality. Uh, so yeah. that's the interesting thing about culture. Um, something that I'd mentioned about vision is that uh, in the bad guy organization, I hear the word motivation a lot. And think about motivation. You know, Harry, you're motivated by you know given things. I'm motivated by given things. Kyle can be motivated by given things. One of the things that we're all motivated by is fear. Okay, so <laughs> what 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 we're afraid of and that sort of thing. Everybody is motivated by fear. And so one of the things that, that tends to happen is there's a fair amount of fear in that vision of the bad guy in the organization. And so there's a lot of people that are motivated to do the things that this bad guy wants to do that wants them to do. But a lot of it comes from out of fear. And so it can yeah. be fear for loss of job or a lot of different ways in which they can be hurt. And so um, the, so under the the vision, under the fear attitude, there's more of a push, a vision. And in the good guy organization, there's more of a pull as it comes to vision. And instead of motivating, they're inspiring their people. And there's a there's mm -hmm. a there's an interesting thing that comes out of those two words or those two environments. So if I say that uh, let's say I'm gonna hold a speech somewhere and and I say I'm going to motivate these people. And I go out and give this speech and nobody's motivated. And I say, Harry, look at all those unmotivated people. I mean, we need to get new people. I can blame the people when I use the word motivate. But if I say, I'm going to go out and give a speech and inspire all these people. And then I give a speech and nobody's inspired. Who is to blame? Because the blame comes right back here, doesn't it? Kevin, you failed to inspire these people. And so that, that whole difference in attitude comes around to being a reflection on one of the things I already mentioned was team because yep. in the bad guy organization generally they're always blaming the team mm -hmm. and even in terms of productivity they're wondering how much they can get out of each individual and so when you look at let's just take one of these examples where you mentioned that there's x number of millions of dollars distributed to people in the organization I'm not saying this is the case, but in a bad guy organization, that money disproportionately will be distributed to the people that that person thought he got the most out of. Okay, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. in a good guy, in a good guy organization, the money will be distributed to the based on the merits of the team. 
And when they're looking at hiring good people in the organization, um, instead of saying, how much can I get out of this new guy that comes in, in the good guy organization, they're going, how does this new guy fit into the team? Because they're looking at how they impact, you know, overall team performance. So, yeah. and then, yeah. then two other things that I would mention, I mentioned morale. In the yeah. bad guy organization, you have what I call pseudo community. It's pseudo is just another word for fake. And so people pretend like they're getting along. They pretend like there's nothing wrong, but there's all this <laughs> infighting and a lot of chaos that's actually in this bad guy organization. And again, whenever fear is like this motivating thing that's going on, there's all kinds of undercurrents that are not good undercurrents that are happening in the organization. And in the good guy company, the morale is actually real community because people do embrace differences. Uh, you see a lot more innovation. You see a lot more excitement. People um, are showing up to work even early because they're excited to be there as opposed to showing up early because they're worried about being fired. That's a completely wow. different thing. And then the, just the last c component I mentioned about weathering the storm. Um, in a bad guy organization, when the cycle of the company starts going down, they tend to fire people and say, this guy's not doing this, this guy's not doing that, whatever. In the good guy organization, they tend to look at their management and their processes and really the things the company is, is focusing on and they start fixing management and start fixing processes and they come out with a much stronger organization out the other side. So. Um, I would go back to your original question, you know, is it good guys or bad guys that um, uh, finish first or finish last? And I would say that if we looked at the total sum of people finishing first, uh, the good guys probably finishing, uh, out of every 10 people finishing first, probably eight of them are the good guys. Oh, good. I'm uplifted. And, and, and again, I just I, I have the utmost respect for the players in my industry. So let me just level set with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm also the first to admit that there, um, there there's some tough dudes out there. Man. <laughs> yeah, they're very <laughs> and, tough. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm, I'm just coming from the likes of a life raising two boys on Bainbridge Island, Washington with puppy dogs and polka dots, man. I mm -hmm. mean... <laughs> So, <laughs> well, when you think about it's this, there's a, there's a word that people will use a lot and there's a really fine line between which one is happening. But think about somebody who's a, a very assertive leader and then think about somebody yeah. who's a very aggressive leader. And, ah, and you go, uh, yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's a super fine line uh, between assert assertiveness versus aggressiveness. And... Um, yeah, the I, I think the I think yeah. the good guy takes in his organization all the way to the point of assertiveness, but doesn't cross the line into that aggressiveness, which to me goes into a whole new territory, which in in many cases manifests itself in a very negative way. Yeah, yeah, it does. And then y y y you know, yeah, no, this is a good conversation. I mean, when I've seen. Um, aggressiveness and boy there's no shortage in the seattle tech community of that but but you yep. know what's interesting kevin is and having grown up with it um a lot of these people mellow when they get older right mm -hmm. and 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 I, I i i tend to stay friends with people i worked with at microsoft and beyond uh just because um i mean i i i, I try to delineate between business behavior and personal behavior and so on and it's always interesting to me that uh, fast forward the movie and people's careers and their priorities change in life, kids, family, maybe trying to work out and live a longer life. And I know you do some health shows and some of those, yep. you know, type of uh, topics, but it's, it's always interesting when I can go back to somebody and say, you, you know, dude, you were kind of a jerk back in the '90s, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're, you're 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 a good guy now, but I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> well, you you know the 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 point to all of that is that everybody can learn, and as long as uh, as long as you keep an open mind, uh, you can you can learn, and you should be becoming a better person as time goes on. 
you know, if, if you get to be 56 years old and you're still this a-hole, um, yeah, there's probably <laughs> a lot of blinders you had on through all of those years and there's probably a lot of lessons you failed to learn. Uh, that's basically what it is. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, maybe if I could offer kind of, and thank you, by the way, for the, uh, the mini, uh, I'll call it a mini MBA lecture. I think it's overdue in our format. We've been working sure. together, what, almost, before you know it, coming up on a year, and we probably need to do more of these business talks. Um, I, I do tend to get down into the engineering a little bit, but uh, 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 bottom line, bottom line is, uh, you know, Arnie's a character, and I'm happy to admit that. Uh, he's a little bit of a handful, but again, I got a hand to somebody, man, that started from, from nothing and, and got acquired for 1.5 bill and didn't get diluted by investment capital. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, if I had a hat, I'd take my hat off. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, you, now you know what I know. You know what I, I, I think of, of, uh, these, these different ways in which pers uh, personalities manifest themselves, but, um, when you were mentioned talking there, I was reminded of a um, two differences in a farming operation, and these two differences actually also show some of the differences between the so-called bad guy uh, type operation and the good guy operation. And you know, not only are are human beings very instinctive, but so are animals. And and there's a. Yeah. Um, Interesting observation that I made uh, quite some time ago because I've I've been a, I've been in I spent a fair amount of time in farm country, and I was aware of this operation where when the time of day came that they wanted to get their horses and their cattle uh, back to the barns and back to the feedlots that they'd send the cowboys out on horses with you know uh, whooping and hollering and snapping a whip and everything else and they'd get all this these cattle corralled and get them all driven to this location where they wanted to go. That's one type of managing the herd, so to speak. But I also have witnessed a, um, a guy who has no cowboys and no crew who goes out to the field and gets the herd and doesn't need to because he just walks to the fence and yells and the whole herd runs to him. It was like such a cool thing to see all the cattle come to exactly where he wanted them to go and all he had to do was open his mouth and say something and i'm and in uh the interesting part is is that as leaders in business um we are the same way and the people around us are the same way so my point is is that if you're going on some journey and you have no personal you have no positional power to influence anyone and you decide to step out and go somewhere if you look around behind you and nobody's there following, you might have been one of those bad guy type leaders. If you look behind yeah. you and there's a big crowd of people that are very interested in where you're going and would like to go along, you probably were one of those good guy leaders because that's just the way it works. Yeah. Well, like I say, a long overdue conversation and as uh, a, a realtor told me many years ago, he, he had a particular way of describing potential buyers and he would always say they're very nice people. Um, now, you got to understand, that's a realtor trying to consummate a sale and a transaction, sure. but it, it, was, it was a good line. But I can honestly say you two are very nice people and we continue the journey as, as we march with Tech Tuesday, man. <laughs> there, there you have it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you much, Harry. Um, great conversation as always. Thanks to everybody who joined us here on Tech Tuesday on Northwest Digital News. We'll be back again, of course, next Tuesday with Harry Brailsford, Kevin Hunter, and Kyle Torgerson. Take it away, Kyle. This concludes today's live programming on Northwest Digital News. Thanks for joining us for this special broadcast. Heard around the world in more than 70 countries on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, Facebook, and Twitch TV. If you enjoyed a story or guest we had here on Northwest Digital News and would like to strut your stuff on the broadcast, email us today at wainfo2017 at gmail.com or call or text 360-545-3501. We're always interested in unique stories, topics, and guests to share with our worldwide audience. Before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and comment on the live stream. And for those of you who'd like to financially support the broadcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Northwest Digital News. 
we thank you for your patronage. On behalf of Chris Bornstead, Kyle Torgerson, Stephanie Hunter, and all the people that made this broadcast possible, I'm Kevin Hunter. Till next time, take care.